Hello, this is a quick video to show how to create confidence intervals in Tableau. This is for Community GIS, a class at the University of Georgia, um, but it's applicable for anyone who's looking to use um, information with percentages and standard errors to create confidence intervals in Tableaus, particularly in bar charts. So, um, as you can see here, I've opened up Tableau. This is Tableau um, 10.4. I'm going to go ahead and connect to a data set um, that already exists. This is from survey data from the Athens Wellbeing Project um, here in Athens, Georgia. So I'm going to go ahead and open that up. And you'll see the data listed here. This is in long format. Um, I'm grouping it by four middle school zones. There's a variety of variables. We're going to look at information on um, move. Uh, residential mobility over the course of the last two years. Um, it'll become clear once we look at it. There's a variable name we're not going to use here, and then there's both a point estimate, uh, percentage point estimate, percent of the population, and then a standard error that's associated with that point estimate. Um, so that's all loaded. We're going to go ahead and move over to a sheet here, and we're going to just create a confidence interval um, for that. In order to create this, we're going to need to create three new variables. Um, I'm using uh, a guide from Tableau that I'll post in the information um, with this video uh, on YouTube. Um, but this is the basic um, procedure that they walk through. So first, we'll have to create both the high and low estimates based on margin of error. Margin of error is here defined as standard error times 1.96 to create a 95% confidence interval. Um, so we'll go ahead and go into analysis, and we're going to create a calculated field. Um, the first calculated field we're going to create is the um, low end, so the low estimate. And that's going to be percent minus 1.96 times the percent standard error. So we're going to use that as our error term. Um, low estimate is subtracting that from our point estimate. Click OK. We'll do the same thing to create a high-end estimate. So create a calculated field, high estimate, and it's going to be percent plus 1.96 times the percent standard error. And then the last thing we're going to need is the range of that confidence interval. So the high estimate um, subtracting the low estimate from that. So we're going to just call that the range. And we'll call high estimate minus the low estimate. And we'll click OK. And now we've got that all together. Now we can go ahead and put together our um, bar chart with the confidence interval showing. So we're going to use our grouping variables, which is um, middle school. Um, and then we're also going to have a variable name um, on here. I'm going to filter that to just variables that are the moved variables, moved 0, 1, and 2, and 3, and that's how many moves households have made in the last two years, 0, 1, 2, or 3. Um, we're going to go ahead and click OK with that. So we filter to just that variable, and then we'll add variable name on here as well um, as a grouping variable. You'll see now those listed up here. And just to get started, we'll put the um, low estimate on here. And you'll see that listed. So this is the last estimate. You can see most households have not moved in the last uh, two years, but there is some variation by school. Um, so to create the um, confidence interval bands, we've got to do a few things. So first, we're going to put the low estimate and high estimate over here on the detail um, box in the marks tab. And we're going to use those to create a reference band. Um, and to do that, I'll right-click here on the x or the y-axis and choose Add Reference Line. And I want to choose Band and per cell because we're going to create one of these for each cell. And the low end of that band is going to be the low estimate. We don't need to compute anything, um, so it's just the low estimate. The high end is going to be the high estimate, right? And we don't need to compute anything there as well. And we're going to put a line here. Um, on either side. And what this is going to do is going to give us basically the top and bottom, um, marking the top and the bottom of each band. Um, these aren't totally necessary in my opinion. Um, it's what Tableau walks us through and I think it does provide some clarity um, when we're done. A um, couple more things we have to do. One, we have to change these from bar plots to what are called Gantt um, diagrams or Gantt lines, so or Gantt bars. And so we'll go ahead and, and move this over from being automatic or bars, the automatic in this case, over to a Gantt bar, right? So now you can see there's just the tiniest little line there that represents that low estimate value. And then we want the size of those bars, that is how tall they are to represent the range, 
right? So we grab our range here and we move it over to the size variable. And there we go. So now we see that range there. And if we want to mess with the size, we can click on this, make them skinnier or fatter or whatever we want to do. Um, here again, that reference line I think is not totally necessary, but it does provide a nice marker of where the top and bottom of those ranges are. Um, so now we have that set up just the way we want them to. If we want to uh, vary these by middle school so we can compare across a little bit easier, we could move middle school over to color, and that will change the color as we go. But overall, you see here we've got confidence intervals, which clarify that, for instance, while Coyle Middle School is lower than the other three when it comes to um, percentage of households that have moved zero times, there's some overlap in this confidence interval between Coyle and Hillsman, um, which means we can't say they're significantly different from one another. Coyle is different from BHL and Clark, however. So anyway, hopefully this is useful, and um, thanks for watching.